Hey guys, your teacher here, bringing you topic number two of this term, which is the passive voice. Uh, please remember to take notes and of course, check the other links to reinforce the information you see here, because this is just an introductory session. Let's begin. So let's take a look at the passive voice. But before we begin with the passive voice, let's remember what the active voice is. So we have an example here. People spend money every day. Simple sentence, very simple sentence. So in a passive voice, the same sentence would be money is spent by people every day. If we want, we can say money is spent every day. So there are little differences, but the sentences mean the same. So Sarah visited the mall yesterday. In the passive voice, the mall was visited yesterday. Now Sarah is not even included, and that's okay. So we're changing the focal point of the sentences, but the sentences have the same meaning. So people spend money, now money is spent. Sarah visited the mall, the mall was visited, okay? In the active voice, someone or something does an action, and in the passive voice, someone on something receives an action. So let's take a look again at the active voice. The structure of the active voice is a subject, okay? that does an action, and that action affects, okay, an object. Remember that this object can be a person, and the object a person too, or the subject a person, and the object, well, an object, or the subject can be an animal, and the object a person. It's okay, it doesn't matter what it is, it is something or someone, an action that affects someone or something. For example, we have Sarah took classes this morning. So the subject is Sarah, the action is take, and the object are the classes. The microwave burnt the food the subject is the microwave, the action is burn, and the object is the food. So it can be object, object, person, person, object, animal, animal, person, uh, whatever, it can be anything. Now let's go over the passive voice. So let's change the vocal point. So an object, the object goes first. The object receives an action and the action is done by the subject. And the subject is between parentheses because it can be left out. If we want, we can just focus on the object and the action and not mention the subject. Again, the same rule applies. We can have person-person, person-object, animal-person, or any combination. For example, the same sentences. Classes were taken this morning. So the object that receives the action is classes. The action is take. And the subject is not specified they never mention the subject. It's not necessary. We have the food was burnt by the microwave. So the object is the food, the action is burn, and the subject is microwave. Okay, this time the subject is mentioned and we have it there. So something receives an action and that action is done by 
something or someone. Good? So the passive voice and the tenses. This is very important because the passive voice is not a tense. It is obviously a voice. So we have a note. The passive voice can be used in every tense. Okay? The passive voice is not a tense. It can be used in any tense. How? Let's take a deep look at the structure of the passive voice. So we have the object, okay, the object that receives the action, plus the verb to be in the tense that we're speaking. Okay, the verb to be is conjugated in the verb we are using, plus the action, okay, and the action is not conjugated in many ways. Now, the action is always in the past participle, okay? So we have the object plus the verb to be in the tense we're using plus the action always in the past participle and the subject between parentheses because we don't know. If you want, we can use it. If you don't want to, we can't uh, skip it. We can just leave it out. So we have some examples. Mary was seen at the restaurant yesterday. That's simple past. Mary was seen at the restaurant yesterday. So the verb to be is conjugated and the action C is in the past participle. Always. We have cookies are bought every day. So simple present. The verb to be is in the simple present, are, and but is in the past participle. She has been told many times to stop. That's a present perfect. She has been in the present perfect and told in the past participle. They will be punished if they don't stop. So we have the first conditional. They will be punished, okay? We can consider it the uh, future with will. Of course, in the first conditional, we use the future with will. And again, will be, future with will, and punished in the past participle. We are being taught about the manners. We are being taught about manners. That's the present progressive. We are being taught about, about, about manners. We have we are being in the present progressive and taught in past participle. We have a second note, of course. That is what I told you about. Only the verb to be is conjugated in the tense you are using. So only the verb to be changes depending on the tense, while the action, okay, the action that the object receives is also in the past participle. Well, guys, that was it for the class. I hope you liked it. I hope you understood everything. Remember to check all of the other links and watch all of the other videos for more information and to practice. Uh, please take notes and do your homework and we'll see each other next week. Take care and goodbye.